Yeah, it has been known to shoot out about 10 feet there. So for some backstory, let's rewind to the 2015 gasifier and biochar workshop held at the Factor E Farm, Open Source Ecology, Maysville, Missouri. My son and I were contracted to conduct this gasifier workshop and team build a gasifier for a Briggs V-Twin powered hydraulic drive called a Power Cube for farm use. It worked great, as you can see the nice blue flame. The 27 horse Briggs V-Twin ran good too. The 1991 Luminous Gasifier I had taken there to demo and it worked amazingly well too, but it had some construction issues. Time for some improvements. So that fire brick is actually melted. That glossy look you see there, it's not wet. It's actually melted. All right, so here we are most of the way through making a batch of charcoal. Still getting some yellow flame. Fire hasn't burned all the way to the bottom. As you can see, the paint as it scorched off there. Now this is my old charcoal gasifier barrel. Charcoal powered. Alright. So it had rusted through pretty badly. Over here you can see some gaping holes. <laughs> Yeah, that's no good for charcoal gasification anymore. Got some poplar in there. It's got a ways to go yet. So you might recognize this. This is an oil pump. It goes to a small block Chevy. And the interesting thing is that I don't think it has any rubber seals of any kind. The uh, shaft is just kind of loose, spins real freely. And uh, another thing I found interesting is that I can make it motor just by blowing in that. So that right there is what's inside of the uh, of the oil pump. Not surprising at all. Single stage gear pump. what you get for a $70 Harbor Freight MIG welder. The beginnings of a liquid cooled hearth. We'll have an inlet here and an outlet toward the top, well, which is down because the thing's upside down right now. 
And then in this space, there will be liquid, probably oil. You just got to close in that one little space there. And this gap, the piece that goes here will have a fitting as well, just like here. Been using the TIG. Works a lot better. Maybe it's my imagination, but I think my TIG welds are getting are getting better. Still not all that good, I admit. Here's another apparatus. This is a a water cooled or liquid cooled intake. I would say. So, there's a tube welded inside of a tube with some fittings attached. And yes, my welds were sloppy and they leaked, so I gooped them up. And I drew a vacuum to pull the sealant in as well. But anyway, it's another, that's another topic. So in a minute, you'll see where this goes. So that's where the water cooled intake goes. Okay, so now we got all the cooling lines hooked up. There's one that just comes up from the hearth, loops down, goes to the top of the air intake, and then from the bottom comes up and goes out. And one goes from the hearth and just goes out. So the plan is to circulate the water from the hearth up into the intake and then finally out to a little heat exchanger of some sort. All right, so we made a little progress here. Got the brackets welded on and got the whole thing assembled. Working on the puff lid. Should go on top of there. And a great shaker. Up inside of this hole. See the kind of see the end of the rod there. I'd be wondering. Um, Here's a kind of an exploded view of my great shaker. That's a, a piece of uni strut that I cut and welded to a 3 8 steel rod. And then there's a nut welded to the rod for a stop and some washers. And then, uh, hang on, let me turn on my light. There we go. So, uh, there's a bit of a bearing welded onto the back of the inch and a quarter bushing, which goes into the barrel. Then we have a three quarter to three eighths brass bushing. And then threaded into that is a three eighths NPT thread by compression. And instead of a compression ring, I just have an O ring for a seal. So we have hinged and sprung the puff lid. There's a hinge there. Come back here. Keep everything in alignment.
Might have to rotate it a little bit to bring the registration marks up. But yeah, we're equal on all sides. I have to do something to keep the spring from falling off. Yes, sirree.